The psalmist would ultimately say in Psalm 14 and verse 1, that the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Number two, David would want you to know tonight that both heaven and hell are real. Just like the rich man and Lazarus, David is now awaiting judgment in what we call the Hadean realm. He can clearly see that there is a part of that realm that is often called Abraham's bosom, paradise, where there's peace and joy, that place that ultimately leads to heaven. But he can also see where he is at, that place of torment, which ultimately leads to eternal destruction. And in this realm where David is at presently, he can see that great gulf which is fixed, just as the rich man and Lazarus, that does not allow one to pass from either of those places to the other. And so as the Hebrews writer concluded in Hebrews 9, 27, as it is appointed unto man once to die, and after this the judgment. And when this, is hap when this happens, rather, we will either be raised to eternal life or to eternal condemnation, according to John 5, 28 and 29. Number three this evening, David would want you to know that God gave His only Son for you so that you can have eternity with Him in heaven. That's something that David apparently believed. And now that he has stepped into eternity, he, want, he would want me to share that with you. You know, that's a matter of love. The most familiar Bible verse probably to most of us. John 3.16 <coughs> For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. And you know, God doesn't want any of us to perish. According to 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 9, Peter says, The Lord is not slack concerning His promise, as some men count slackness, but He's long-suffering to, to us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And thus He provided the way for salvation, even though it cost Him His Son. Paul reminds us in Romans chapter 5, verses 8 and 9, that God demonstrated His love to us. That while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. And so, God gave His Son for you, so you can go to heaven. David would also want us to know this evening that you must obey God's <coughs> Word in order to receive His grace. <coughs> That's something that needs to be stressed today. In speaking with Melanie, I understand that David always tried to do what God's Word said based on his understanding of that Word. And I know that he would want you to do the same tonight. Our Lord and Savior reminds us in Matthew 7 and verse 21 that not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven but he who does the will of my Father which is in heaven. Hebrews chapter 5, verses 8 and 9, speaking of Jesus, the writer says, Though he were a son, he learned obedience by the things which he suffered. And having been perfected, he became the author of eternal salvation to all those who obey him. And so if you simply obey God's word, you can be a beneficiary of God's grace. And thus you will be prepared to die. To the family, I pray that you will seek the help of each other. And the good people gathered in our presence this evening to make it through these dark hours. But most importantly, please seek the help of God. He alone can provide that comfort that you need. In second, or first Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 3 and 4. Paul tells us there, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who comforts us in all our tribulation. He alone can provide it. 
And I know that it must seem to you tonight that, that you just almost cannot bear this loss and the heartache, the loneliness and the fear that awaits. But God promises that He will not allow us to be tempted beyond that we can stand. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 13 says, No temptation has taken you but such as is common to man. But God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted beyond that you are able but will also with the temptation make a way of escape. I would encourage you in the coming days and weeks to seek advice from the Psalms. You know, the psalmist had some great advice for the grieving. For instance, in his dark hour of despair, the psalmist recognized that he needed to seek help from the Lord. In Psalm 77 and verse 2, he says, In my day of trouble... I sought the Lord. Another occasion is Psalm 34 and verse 18. The Lord is near to those who have a broken heart and saves those who have a contrite spirit. And one more in Psalm 55 verse 22 where he says, Cast your burden on the Lord and He will sustain you. Ultimately, Perhaps the greatest source of comfort that I can provide for you this evening is to know that one day, because of the work that Christ did, death will be swallowed up in victory. Paul reminds us in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 that death is only momentary. And for those who live a faithful life of obedience to God, when you make it to the other side of eternity, you can look back and stare death in the face and say, Death, where is your sting? And grave, where is your victory? Let us pray once more. Father, we again come to you asking for your continued blessings on this family as they struggle with overwhelming physical emotions. Help them to be reminded of the fact that physical death is not the end. Father, please go with them. Keep them close to your heart in the coming days, weeks, and months. Help us to realize, Father, that we too one day will share in this common lot of man, death. And since that is the case, that we need to be prepared. Father, please help Melanie and the rest of the family to know your presence, to know your guidance, to know your love, and to know your presence. Help them to stay constant in their faith. Help them to always trust in you. And Father, this hour we thank you most of all for your precious Son who willingly gave his life for our wrongdoings in order that we could live eternally with you. We know, Father, that because of that sacrifice, we can attain that resurrection of life if we're obedient to your holy word. So thank you once again, Father, for your many blessings. And again, we ask for your comfort, your strength, and your peace for this family. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Thank you.